Hello and welcome back again to High Desert Home and Garden. Um, today we're in final preparations for moving. Um, so we got four new tires on the truck. Um, well, you guys may think I'm crazy for saying what I'm getting ready to say, but uh, we're going to do, as I said, final prep railing. Do you think he's going to behave? Well, we'll see whether he does or not. Speaking of this thing here. Anyway, um, as I was saying, we're going to do final preparations for the trip for the truck. Uh, I'm going to change the oil, uh, check the front rear diff, all that good stuff. Like I said a minute ago, we've got uh, new tires all the way around. Uh, a good spare tire also. Um, and anyway, call me crazy if you want to, but we're going to drive that truck 1,800 and I think 41 miles with my work toolbox in the bed and, oh, excuse me, 1,871 miles with my work toolbox in the bed and a 6x12 U-Haul trailer on the back of it. Um, considering the distance that we're moving and I don't have another truck to drive, that's the one we're going to take. Um, 95 F250 with a 7.3 and a 5 speed. Uh, yeah. Anyway, it should at least be an interesting trip. Um, I'm not going to bore you guys with all the details of how to change the oil and various other things but I will kind of give you an overview of it here so let's get started so we got the hood open and we are going to replace fuel filter the engine oil filter, drain the engine oil, obviously. Uh, looks like we're a little low on coolant over there. Gonna wanna check your brake fluid, which is good. Clutch master cylinder. Um, I've got four new tires in the last 2,000 miles. We've just done shocks on all four corners. I did front wheel bearings recently. Um, yeah, anyway, so now we're down to the last little bit. We're going to give it its final oil change before the trip and a grease job while we're at it. Um, probably going to adjust the rear brakes too, because they are drum brakes on this truck. But anyway, that's what I'm doing today. Um, should be an interesting ride. I'm going to take video along the way for at least a little clip in each state and uh, kind of show you what's going on. Anyway, let me get busy on getting my stuff done here. All right, so one step that I always do take and there seems to be some debate about it uh, is that I pre-fill the engine oil filter on this truck and I've done it with everything I've ever owned that was possible to do it. Um, a vertical mount oil filter such as this one. Um, I always just fill them up because the, uh, yeah, it just speeds the process of getting oil pressure to the engine rather than having to wait and let the oil pump fill the filter up. And, you know, when, when I was taught how to service uh, diesels and I mean, pretty much anything, uh, it was always considered to be a good idea. An extremely good idea for a turbocharged engine 
to pre-fill the oil filters, which is why most of them are mounted vertically. Now, some of the old like international farm tractors and stuff such is not the case, but you have a mechanical injection pump with a manual fuel shut off. So you just crank the engine with the fuel shut off until it uh, gets oil pressure. Then you turn the fuel on and I have to excuse my background noise. I've got my little boy today, obviously. But uh, anyway, you would crank the engine until you saw oil pressure on the gauge, then turn the fuel on, run it, and check for leaks. Uh, it's just one of those things that I always, uh, one of those topics that I think I need to cover. Um, I think it's a good idea. I don't really see any reason why you shouldn't. Uh, Caterpillar would tell you to, probably would tell you not to do that because of their contamination control. Um, and that's one other point also. Mobile oil. That's what I use in this truck. Just standard 1540. No synthetic or anything. But uh, it, uh, it complies with Caterpillar's 2 micron. Yeah. 2 micron uh, particles. Because mobile makes Caterpillar's oil. Anyway. Uh, cat would tell you probably not to do that specifically so that you wouldn't contaminate the filter um, again I don't really see a huge issue but anyway guys this is just another step in my process that I always do so I'll get back to you in a bit alright so as I mentioned we were going to check the clutch master cylinder and uh, it's pretty low so, we're going to go ahead and top that off, and we'll have to crawl under and check and see if we've got a leak somewhere. Yeah. Now, well, it's important not to overflow these things, because it has this little diaphragm and lid. Um, I don't really know the purpose of the diaphragm other than it's just there to keep it uh, keep it from sloshing fluid probably when uh, you let the clutch out but anyway slowly and carefully put the diaphragm in and put the lid back on and uh, that is that for now other than, like I said, I'm going to have to go check and see if we got any leaks or not. If we do, I'll show you. Alright, so. Uh, didn't find any leaks on our clutch master cylinder, clutch hydraulic system. Um, everything with the old girl pretty much checks out, as well as I can tell. So, uh, yeah. Pretty much the only thing that's left is to pick up my tools and U-Haul trailer and then... Uh, Take about a three day drive, sounds like. Um, it'll break up really nice into three nine hour days rather than probably two 18 hour days. Of, if I'm, you know, what's, what's gonna be one downfall of driving this thing cross country is uh, you will be tired when you get to the end of your day. Um, <clears throat> it's uh, not quite the cushy, comfortable ride of the more modern stuff. Not that it's uh, gonna be bad, but, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm going to take video um, in every state along the way that we're going to travel through. We're going from Nevada to Indiana, as I said, with my work toolbox, which weighs, uh, oh, what does that thing weigh? So well, let's say somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000 pounds anyway. It's a pretty good sized box and it's pretty full. Um, actually three boxes, but anyway. And then we have, we're gonna have a six by 12 U-Haul trailer behind it with mostly the heavy stuff out of the house pretty much and whatever else will fit. 
So, uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting trip because I've got to go Nevada, Utah, Wyoming, Nebraska, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana. 1,871 miles in an OBS Ford, a regular cab, no less. Me and the Australian cattle dog. The boys are going to go and explore with their grandma and their mother. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Please comment, rate, and subscribe for more. And I sincerely hope you tune in when I get the cross-country video posted because that should be a really good time. Again, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later. Thank <laughs> you.